Hey there, I am Parth Doshi, exploring the field of RPA and sharing my learnings with you by making videos. So, as you can see the heading of the video, in this video we are going to understand what is POC. Now, the full form of POC is proof of concept. Now, with this word, there are many things related. What is POC? Why POC? Who actually does POC? What is POC in RPA? When to do it? How to do it? And why is it necessary to do it? We are going to understand each of these terms one by one in this video. Now, first of all, the full form of POC, as I said, is proof of concept. Now, as the verse suggests, is we are trying to give a proof for a particular concept that we are trying to implement. Now, concept here means the automation project that we are trying to build. We are trying to give a proof that this automation project is going to work. So now businesses, when getting started with their RPA journey or with their automation journey, or when they are trying to automate the businesses, automate, automate their businesses, they first go ahead with POC. Now you see each and every different business might have different web portal, different Excel files, or different mailing services. Some might use Gmail, some might use Outlook, etc., etc. There can be different things. Some web portals may be different. Some documents may be different and many things are involved in that. So now before a business, so suppose I'm running a business, I want to automate my business processes. First of all, I would like to see whether it is possible to automate my business processes. So what idea I'm thinking, like I want to gather the data from multiple sources. I want to put it in one Excel file and then I want to send it somewhere or put it into the database. Now, is that practically possible? Can that be done in the real world environment, which my business is currently using? So in that case, a POC is built. Now POC is something that before building the complete project, now automation can be a long set of processes or it can be just a small process. So now POC can be on both the things. Either you try to build a workflow, which involves your complete automation from start till end, and you give a proof of that particular thing. Like suppose I'm going to use UiPath to automate my business processes. Now will UiPath able to do the things that I want to automate and which are practically possible? Now, how do you see that? You can't just give the production environment or your life business data to the person whom or to the vendor whom you are trying to uh, get help to automate your business processes. You give him some test data or something like that. So now, in that case, POC is involved. So now we have understood what is POC and why should we do POC. Now, what are the advantages of POC? There is rapid implementation, there is cost saving. You get a clear understanding of what are the requirements and also your development gets faster. Now, moving on from POC to other. Now, suppose only Excel uh, automation is there. Like you have to read Excel, you have to find some common data from four or five Excels, and then you have to put it in one Excel file and then maybe database. So now when you do a POC on this, now what might change is just the Excel file structure. Other things, finding the common data or putting it to in one Excel file is going to be the same. So you have now one complete workflow, which is ready to be, you know, it can serve as like, whenever you want to learn something, you need a video or a demo to learn that and you do try to do same things. So in that case, you have that one particular workflow of your POC already ready, which you can have a look every time. So that is how POC is helpful. Also, there are cost savings. There are other advantages as well like validates compilance, achieves cost saving, rapid implementation, as I said, predicts if output will be error free or not. And one of the most important thing is, will this process get automated or not? That is the very important thing we come to know with the help of POC. Okay, so I think we have covered major topics. What is POC, why POC, when to do it, how to do it. Now, also there can be phases in POC. First, you gather the requirements. You understand them completely. Once you have got a clear understanding of what the environment is or what the environment can be, you know now that uh, this particular requirements are to be satisfied by this POC. Now, what after requirements are understood? You start the process preparation. You just do the confirmation. So it's basically like 
you this second phase is like you properly understand the requirements you may be build a uh, some flow chart or something like that on paper or wherever or while discussing you build that now what you do is you prepare the technical environment obviously you can't directly use the portal which is live in use right now or which is already like the companies using it normally you need to have test data you need to have a portal with credentials which is like not going to affect the current ongoing business because the business can't be stopped just for a poc so in that case the third phase is like you prepare the technical environment now once the technical environment is prepared what you do is you start your execution you have your poc workflow ready or anything poc you have your poc ready you have the technical environment ready and then what you do is you execute your workflow and you test it you see what errors are coming what needs to be resolved what it affects it might have while it goes into production and many other things now after that comes the last phase of poc that is execution so now uh, sorry conclusion so now once the process is discussed it is prepared technical environment is prepared it is executed and the last step which is there that is going to be conclusion you bring out the conclusion you give it to the client for whom you were developing the poc and you explain all the things that were done in the complete poc and how it is running on a test environment so i hope you got a clear understanding of what is poc why poc when you should do it so again if there if your business or if your business is just starting with their rpa journey poc can be a great you say great step to understand how your business might be automated after that we also understood what are different phases let me explain it again understanding process process preparation technical environment setup execution and conclusion so there are six steps of a poc okay after that we discussed yeah why it is important to a business and when should you do a poc and not only when getting started with a rpa journey in general also you have already started with your rpa journey you have automated three or four processes now you automate want to automate fourth or fifth process something like that but you are not sure whether that will be automated or even the person or even the company whom you are giving your projects to be automated or your business to be automated wants to be sure that yes this is possible and this can be done in the real world environment at that time poc are also done so thank you for watching the complete video i hope you found this video informative and useful and maybe it can help you start your business automation journey thank you for watching the complete video and please do subscribe to my youtube channel pardoshi learning by doing see you in the next video